with, um, I think his girlfriend and you, are y'all taking care of him? Yes. Okay, that's what I had talked to her, I guess it was yesterday. Um, I, and I, when we, when he first come in, we got information on where he lives and who he lives with. And that kind of when thing. he so first like, came in on the 13th, that wasn't yesterday. No, I, I, I know. I said, I, I said we have a note in the chart. Yeah. So we always ask them I mean, where they live, if they have support at home and that kind of thing. So to make sure they have someone to help take care of them when they get home. Right. So mm -hmm. my understanding from Lizette is that she told you on, it, he came in on Saturday night, the 13th, mm -hmm. and then uh, for some reason you don't have any kind of a locator service where they open up his wallet and see yeah. where he lives or you know you don't no, we just you don't go on Facebook or anything oh, no. and oh, he no. had a phone and you didn't go in there to oh, find no. out we don't who do he's with well, yeah so she found out on um, the next morning because we we both thought he was out playing with his friends playing cards mm -hmm. and so we didn't bother looking for him because sure. he was supposed yeah. to be missing right. so uh, she she called and luckily one of the nurses heard the phone ringing because Sean's phone ringing and, and answered and then um, so she uh, found out she called me at seven something in the morning but I had turned my phone off because I've had a problem with a debt collection company mm -hmm. and they um, th suggested that I turn my phone off so that I can't get emergency calls uh, and that, that way they wouldn't disturb my sleep. Yeah. So I didn't find out about it until I woke up, mm -hmm. uh, which was pretty late, and then I got down here right as the first snowflake fell mm -hmm. on, on Sunday. And I've been here pretty much ever since. You know, like I do go home to sleep sometimes, and, and I had to take the LSAT yesterday. So, um, so Lizette says that she told you and that you asked her to contact his mother. So you were aware that he had a mother. And she told you that she is his girlfriend. She, they are not married. They have been together 10 years and have a child together that they raised together very well. Mm -hmm. But he chose not to marry her, and so she is not his next of kin. Yeah, she was the only one that was on the chart at the emergency contact. I guess he gave it to him. Or they got it out he of did his not wallet. give it. I don't know was, how they got her. Okay, number. he fell from okay, 34 sorry, feet and hit himself in the head. Okay, we're in. Let's go. Let's go to another room. I don't understand what what the anger is. I mean, I, I'm just coming to let you. To, you, to you don't know what the anger going. is. No, I mean, I'm not here to discuss that. I don't know anything about, um, you know, who who contacted who. We have this. She was the only one at the time that we had oh, yeah. the phone number okay. for. So I don't know if it was in his. They got it out of his phone. Or they got it out. I don't know. No, where they got she. It. I just told you the exact story of how they found her was by her calling right. his phone yes. and. Then she, then they told her where he was and she came down. Yeah. Well, here, here's the thing. I was just going to stop. I'm making rounds. Yeah. And I was just stopping in to verify that he was going to be going home and that when? there was going to be somebody. I don't know. That would have, that have to be his character. And that, that he had someone to help him once he did, came um, You have to give me some kind of an idea. When is he going home? What is. Okay, it, it, then why are you saying I just came to verify that he's going home? Well, that's a lie. It, that he has a home to go to oh. and that he has someone to support him oh. once he gets home. Yes. That's when it. he leaves the hospital, okay. that's what I need to know. He is going home. Okay. Lizette was not authorized to make medical decisions for Sean. I don't know anything about that. Okay. Well, whatever you got her to sign, I didn't that get anybody consent, to sign anything. She says that you had her sign I, a consent. I'm the case manager. I'm not at the bedside. I don't know who I didn't get anyone to sign anything. I just call and I mean I, I just set up discharges is all I do. I'm the case manager. Oh, okay. Yeah. So who do I speak to about the fact that Sean specifically asked not to be treated and I specifically said that I did not want them to do certain procedures that were harmful to him and that they have ignored what he said and they won't let him out. 
and they have dragged him beyond recognition and that um, that if they send him a bill, if they even so much as send him a bill, he, has no he is going to sue them because he is telling you right now he is not paying you. He does not want to be here. I don't have anything to do with the finances of the hospital. Okay. So well, well, I'm giving you an opportunity to find the person who does have something to do with finances to speak with me. They did have the psychologist come speak with me, um, but what I was hoping for was a psychiatrist because he says he has no input on the pharmacological uh, course of action that you're taking, and I have told them from the start that I think he needs a different medication than you're putting him on, but I'm not a doctor, so I don't know, like, with brain injuries, if there is... But when I, I gave my suggestion, the nurse or the doctor who I was speaking to said that they um, couldn't use that clonazepam. They said they couldn't use that. We don't give benzos to TBIs. Okay, so yeah, which is fine. So that's why I wanted a psychiatrist to give some kind of a idea, you know, an analysis of what would be the best thing to calm him down enough to understand that regardless of his desires, you are going to put catheters in him and he can't pull those out because he's damaging himself. So, you know, I want somebody to, who's, who's gonna be able to prescribe the right medications instead of just like putting him in a comatose state with whatever they've got well, the him on right now. Okay. I mean, they, they have a lot of experience with, with traumatic brain injury patients. Okay, do they have experience with psychiatric patients? Um, yeah, I'm sure that they have some. Okay, because they, they do, since they did put him on a 72. I'll do. Yeah. Um, I'll have you at the, Dr. Margulik is the attending physician today. Okay. I don't know which resident is assigned to him, but when they're done with their rounds, I'll see if he can come and speak to you. Okay. Yeah, we just want to make him uh, well enough to be out of the hospital as quickly as possible, and then right, and that but but while not damaging his brain further from over medication and uh, re-traumatizing him. So that's what we're trying to do. I don't want him to be traumatized by the restraints, and that's what's happening. So he, he has a physical self, but he also has an emotional and mental part of himself, and they're damaging that emotional part of himself that, you know, by restraining him. I'm sorry, it's so loud. I know we did. So I just, you know, didn't fall down the stairs. I'm sorry, it's so loud I can't hear. Well, 
No, but he was out of the restraints and he was happy. He was playing checkers. And then. And then he wasn't okay. They, That's what I was telling you last yeah. night. He has periods of lucidity, but we need him to be with it 100% of the time so he can leave. Okay. You know, we're trying to get there. Okay. I'm sorry it's not as fast as you want. Well, it's just not the. It's not about the speed of it. It's about the. I don't want. Don't like the I don't like the restraints but because he doesn't he like the restraints. Like either, but it's and, yeah, and I am concerned with his um, like rights that, you know, he has been very clear that he doesn't want sometimes, this medical treatment. It's not. There has it's never not. been a single moment that he has been happy with the medical treatment. I'm telling you, like, sometimes he makes sense, and then he doesn't make sense. If he was having a normal conversation like me and you right now, yes. okay, yeah, fine. But, but he's not. If he can make great decisions 100% of the time, then we wouldn't even have this conversation. Do you understand? Like, I'm really not agreeing with what you're saying, but that's okay. I understand you. I just don't really agree with it because... I think that he is making sense. He's saying, I do not want this medical treatment. I do not want to be incubated. I do not want to have a catheter. He knows the consequences and he doesn't want it. I want him to have those things. I want him to agree Most to. Yes. Right. I know. And to me, that doesn't make, that's not rational. Okay, and to me, it's not rational that you know that he's going to do that and that you do it a second time. Why would you try the same thing over again, the exact same way that didn't work the first time and caused him injury? Well, we tried to do it your way and not restrain him, and then that was dangerous too. So it was, I okay. I, I, I yeah. Okay, I just wanted to, I wanted to talk with the person in finance because he expressed, I told you, he expressed, he expressed to me that the reason that he wants, no, and I'm telling them that they are not sending him one. I'll get someone from them. They, they told me. This is a future problem, yeah. But still with the problem now with the No, I'm trying to, I'm trying to prevent the future problem because he said that the reason he wants to get out is because he doesn't want to pay five hundred dollars a day. No, I don't want to, but okay, and that is very rational. He made the rational decision not to have insurance, and so he doesn't want to pay. And you know, they and I tried to play a video for him about what his brain injury is, and one of your nurses said. Stop playing that. It's just going to overstimulate him. So I'm trying to be rational with him, and I'm assuming that he understands what I'm saying to him, and he does acknowledge what I'm saying and responds to me appropriately. And so I just want him to know Sometimes, and that, that you don't re-traumatize him again. It's almost like you have to you have to keep prompting him. That's what I'm getting from the video. I prompted him to say what he had told me before. So I'm not telling you he's perfect. And That's when I do I'm take him home, it's he's going to have to agree that he's staying in bed unless there's an adult with him. So that's it. And he's going to take his medications. That's his like ultimatum. I will take him home when he will do those things. But he will do those things. Do I have your, your contact in? I think she's in your charge. Okay, yeah. You know, I so, just um, don't think that, I, I don't think that legally that I could force him to stay in the hospital against his will. And if he's not capacitated, then I'm going to act in what, what I know his, it's like if, if he had a do not, not resuscitate. And you know, I, again, my so you feel like he's out of capacity now and you can just take him home and he's going to do exactly what you say. 
No, obviously not. He's on three different medications, including barbiturates. But I think that he was, I talked to him on the phone when he was down in the lobby, and I reasoned with him to go back up to the room. And your nurse made the promise to me that I could bring a pillow and food that would be more helpful than the food that the hospital is putting in him. And she agreed, and then he agreed to go upstairs. I wasn't even here, I just talked to him on the phone. He went upstairs on his own, and then they turned out that they had lied. And one of your nurses, the one that gave him the popsicle, said, she, she came out there when I was in the waiting room and she smirked at me and went, because she knew that you were putting him on the 72 hour hold and I didn't. So you, your staff lied to me and then I lied to my son. The, she has blonde hair, she's a little older. I, I'll, I'll find her when I see her. Because nursing, we don't put orders in. No, bedside nurses don't put orders in. If she's an APN, she's a provider. Mm -hmm. She can put orders in, but my, my nurses no. here cannot do it. Oh, I, I might not have conveyed it properly, but it, I'm saying that she, after I got him to go upstairs by talking to him on the phone, then when I got here, I they, okay, they, they were doing, um, like, putting the restraints on him, putting in the wires and stuff, they made the decision. Yeah, they, when I came back, they had made the decision to go ahead and not do what I had asked them to do. And so they're not listening to me. And so if they're not listening to his next of kin and they're not listening to him, then, you know, this is all on you. Like. And uh, yes, I do believe that he needed care. Mm -hmm. But you are not listening, and you're not listening to him. Well, and you're I'm, not listening I mean, to I, me. I am listening to you. I have listened okay. to you. You have. I, but I don't, nursing, we don't, we don't make the decisions. We don't put the orders in. We're just trying to do the best that we can at the bedside. Okay. To make sure that he's safe, that it's time for him to go home. Okay. That he doesn't get hurt, all of these things. Um, well, let me go find the team and see where Dr. Marlowe is. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your call. If another psych person, I don't know what trauma is. If, if a psychiatrist could talk to me and maybe we could come up with a, some kind of a, a medication that won't leave him confused. I, I know you think it's because of the accident that he's like a little bit confused. some of it is, yeah. So, and probably some of it is. Yeah. But I think that the medications that he's on are not helpful and that the, what you did to, instead of finding the proper medication, was to just try the same thing that wasn't working before which was the restraints and, you know, so like you, you can't just keep trying the same thing over. Some things we can't give him. I mean, okay. there is a limitation to what drugs you can give them. Right. You know, the Presidex seemed like it did help. You know, maybe some of the other things right now, we're just trying to keep them safe. Yeah, so, and it, so, you know, like. It's not gonna be perfect. I know, know but I know, I just, I. I, I, so one of the things I talked about with the psychologist is the, the transparency. So he's asking, very lucidly, he's asking, what do I need to do to get out? So like if you could give us numbers, when your sodium is at this rate, or when you're able, you know, I, I don't even know what's wrong now with after they pulled the catheter. That is the, the thing that bothers me the most about taking him home, is that not his head injury, but the injuries he sustained from pulling out the catheter. Yeah, and, his, yeah. yeah, and he's the one who, who pulled it out, but he told you, and he's medicated, and he's a brain trauma patient. And so he told you, I'm not gonna keep this in. 
do not put this in me. And you put it in him anyway, not you, but you know, they put it in him anyhow, and he pulled it out. And, and you, you know, so like, give me a rational way that he could have made you stop putting that in him. So he asked very nicely, he said, please do not, sir, please do not put that in me. And they put it in him anyways. So now, what does the rational person do? He asked not to have that done, and it was done anyways. So you give me a rational he way. He's being rational, and then he's irrational. And he's rational, and then he's irrational. When he's rational, he wants you to not put the catheter in. I don't even know why he's got the catheter in. Why is that? Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. Yeah. Why is there a catheter in him? I don't know if I needed to monitor urine. I don't know if it's because he wasn't draining after he pulled it out the first time. You know, I'm only here three days a week, so okay. I'm trying to help you the best I can now. Okay, I'm, a patient advocate's a good idea. Yeah, we'll do that. I'll ask the team about psych. I'll see if maybe Dr. Margulick, you know, they can explain the drugs to you better. Why they're making the choices they're making. I don't know who put yeah. them on hold, what they have to hold for, and see if that might help a little bit. Okay. I don't know how to fix it. Well... I don't really know how to, say, to fix just it. Take him home, but I don't think that's a good idea. I'd love to say, let's just take the restraints off, take everything out. I don't know that that's the best idea either. Yeah, it's I a I, very I wish difficult I could just problem. Give you the perfect mm -hmm. answer. No, I, it is it is a very difficult problem. Yeah. Are you going back in? Yeah, but so. it's a very difficult problem. Yes. But I know. And that the heart, the answer, it's a hard patient to manage. Okay, but I know that the answer, he's a hard person to manage, but I know that the answer is well, not just, putting the just wires the and catheters issues. in him against his will. The, that's all. I mean, the, you know, like, unless they are life-saving. So is that what would make you happy? To just take the restraints off, take the foley out, and just then, then what do we do? Well, I mean, do we manhandle him back into the bed when he tries no, to leave? Like, no, no. Does he hit no. somebody because he's fr I don't He know. hasn't hit anybody yet. He hasn't yet. And he hasn't been at all violent. He's he, just he been very yet. rational and saying, I want to leave. He's not saying, I want to kill you or I want no, to like I, destroy I things. He's, and I'm grateful for okay. that. Okay. He's very. He looks you know, calm and peaceful. I know. Right he, well, he is, except for like when sometimes he wakes up and he yells, Help! And I know I do too. Mm -hmm. So he has had past traumas, and I'm trying to tell you all that. He's had a very traumatic life, and he's having, you know, nightmares. And he does look, you know, like I, I wish he could just lay there, and this, in a way, like it's easier on me, and I understand very much how, you know, you all feel. But I just know that we have to come up with some kind of a solution that's not having him tied down. And maybe. maybe consulted psychiatry. Okay, good. Okay, okay, so there we got that ball rolling for you. Okay, great. Yeah, and you know, maybe and, um, maybe when he comes out of this. Also, oh, yeah, we can talk to him as well. Thank Sorry. you. Maybe when he comes out of this, he'll. You know, hopefully, his brain will be working for, I'm differently. I'm ready to see the real Sean 100% of the time. And, and you know what? I hate to say it, but a lot of this is the real Sean. I mean, he he is a hard-headed person that wants, he's not going to... But the Sean that can just have a conversation like me and you are having, that's what I want to see. Yeah. I hope it'll happen soon. So. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. buy his book. You know he wrote a book. I don't. I didn't know that. Oh, he and I wrote a book on poker called um, Balls of Crystal and Steel, How to Play Poker Without Losing Your Assets. He must be, he must be good at poker. His, <laughs> he is a world-class poker player. <laughs> and he... Um, is an amazing writer. I'm a writer and you know, like I write sort of professionally and he is by far better than I am. All of his, we wrote chapters separately and all of his chapters are like amazingly funny. I hope we'll breeze through this and maybe he'll come back up here to visit. Yeah. 
everything will be okay. So just give us some. And you could play poker time. with him, and he'll I take your money. Play poker with him, right? Are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm good at. No, I was good at Uno. That's about it. That's all I'm about for you. There were some visitors calling yesterday in the room, and I was surprised that I was happy to see that they still make Uno cards. Yeah. You know. So thank you, and I do appreciate you. You're I know, welcome. I know you're doing the I'm best sorry, that you I'm, can. I'm really trying to. I know you're doing the best you the can. Best I, can. I know. Yeah. Okay. Do you turn this off? No, he turned.